Good day, uh, dear students. Welcome to the IOL examination based uh, contact session focusing on the subject of early childhood center management, a subject that is being undertaken by students that are doing a certificate in early childhood management. My name is Usko Shivute and my contact details are 081274139. Basically, we are I'm just going to guide you on how to best prepare for your examination. That is now the April, August, as well as the November examination. Before we start, I have prepared some forwards of uh, what we should uh, be expecting. Basically, in a nutshell, I wish to encourage you to be motivated and study hard for this course in order to achieve the end results, which is the qualification that you desire. The important notes that we need to um, have in mind is that when you are preparing for the examination and the question paper itself, you should be ready to answer all the questions that will appear in the question paper. You need to read widely. Uh, what does it mean? Here, I mean that you do not need to confine yourself to study only in the module that uh, you got here, but try to gauge and venture more and do more research um, on the subject related contents, be it on the internet as well as in other sources that you can uh, get in various libraries. We do not show the references in the examination, so you don't need to write um, examination, I mean, references of where certain information came from. Basically, all you need to do in the examination is just to write the clear and precise answers as uh, you so wish. Read and understand the theory and applications of early childhood center management. As I said initially, try to do as much research as possible, either from the internet, either from the other sources of books, so that you equip yourself holistically and fully to understand the subject matter of early childhood management. Try also to develop a theoretical understanding, values and competencies with regard to early childhood education. Study and comprehend the table of verbs, which is very important. I will, uh, at a later stage, try to explain these verbs to you of what exactly do we expect when the question papers or the questions themselves starts with a certain verb. Devote sufficient time in reading the course module. Here, what we are trying to say is that try to be prepared. Do not rush to go and write the examinations. Basically, a lot of uh, students end up panicking, not because they do not grasp the subject content, it's because they try to rush themselves to go and write the examination, meaning you need to give yourself sufficient time to study and prepare for the examination. So the question paper and the examination will only be out of 100 marks. 100 marks and you will be expected to write this for two hours. Now, what is it that we expect you to uh, do 
um, when you are learning? What is it that we want you to comprehend at the end of uh, the uh, module? When you have thoroughly study and try to complete uh, this module, what we should be or the basic competencies that we expect you to have uh, uh, grasp is that you need by the end of this module to be able to be in a position to examine the international as well as Namibian guidelines on early childhood education. You need also to, at the end of the uh, module, you will be in a position to explain the basic features of management and leadership. Management and leadership, these are critical aspects in early childhood development. So you need by the end of the module to have grasp and understand and comprehend what is it exactly that we talk about when we are talking of management as well as leadership. By the end of uh, this module, we'll also be expecting you to be able to be in a position to describe the planning of an appropriate ECD indoor learning environment. Here, you need to be vigilant. You need to understand the indoor aspects. What is it that we expect an ECD center to look like inside? And then we should also be able, by the end of uh, this content, to be in a position as well to describe the planning of an appropriate ECD outdoor learning environment. Remember, indoor and outdoor, that is the key. Meaning, the outside environment of an ECD center, we expect certain features to be there. We expect certain uh, tools to be there vis-a-vis -vis the indoor ones. We'll also be able um, to expect you, uh, dear students, to be in a position to analyze examples of administration documents as well as the forms. Just like in a formal education, whenever you are assessing your kids or your learners, there are certain tools or documentation tools that you make use of to try and keep a record of how your learners are doing. Finally, we'll also be expecting you to be in a position to be able to clarify some financial as well as personal management issues for an early childhood center. Remember, in a modern world where we live in now, there is no way you will be able to do without finances. Now, as an ECD coordinator, for example, you should also be able to learn how to manage finances. Now, our course module comprises of six units. And in these six units, we expect you to have developed a wide spectrum of understanding ECD. In Unit 1, if you go into your course modules, you will find that the international as well as Namibian guidelines on early childhood development is documented there. Here is where we look at the history of ECD, how did we arrive at our ECD centers, and how does Namibia confine itself to the program of our ECDs. In Unit 2, we learn and try to comprehend the basic features of management and leadership. As I said earlier on, dear students, this one is very critical because in any modern environment, as far as ECD senders are concerned, you will be expected to be able to manage and provide leadership. Or you will be expected 
to be managed by a manager or a leader. So these are critical words that you need to know and then also be able to determine the differences. In Unit 3, the planning of an appropriate ECD indoor environment is well documented there. Just as in Unit 4, where the planning of an appropriate ECD outdoor learning environment is documented. These are two aspects, indoor as well as outdoor. It's very critical and you need also to try to picture how an effective indoor ECD should look like as well as an outdoor one. Last but not least, Unit 5. Here, the administration documents are well documented there. These administrative documents is where we look at uh, uh, documents such as uh, the evaluation checklist, the examples of uh, lesson planning, stock taking forms, indemnity form, which is very critical. When you find yourself as an ECD coordinator, for example, you will be expected to say, plan for uh, trips outside of the area of your work. Now, as a coordinator, you will be expected to engage the parents as well as to provide and develop a relationship with the parents. And whenever the um, little ones are traveling, you need to complete these indemnity forms. The indemnity forms is just for the purpose of making sure that whatever eventualities that are not under your control, whatever will happen to the kids, at least you are protected. And you have also asked permission from the parents to travel with those little ones. The last unit here deals with the financial as well as personal management issues for an early childhood center. The parents will be probably uh, pay for their little ones on a monthly uh, basis. How do you manage these finances to make sure that your ECD is lasting? Now, the rationale of this module. What is the purpose exactly of this module? That is the rationale, the establishment of this um, course module. The purpose is to make you or to give you insights on how you should manage your ECD centers. Say, for example, as a manager or a principal of an ECD center or school, you will be responsible for various tasks. Such tasks differs. You will be able, for example, to say some of the tasks that you will uh, be responsible for are day-to-day -day education, the caring of uh, the children, provide comfort to these children, make sure that health is taken care of, make sure that the safety of the children at uh, the ECD centers are as well in tandem or in control of uh, the managers. You will also be in a position to make decisions. These decisions will be very critical. Some are based on policies. You will be expected to manage the staff as well as the resources. Motivate your fellow um, staff members or learners as well as providing inspiration because these are small um, children. You need to inspire them because at the end of the day, what uh, we expect in an ECD um, environment is that some learners come to the ECD centers with emotions. Some can be socially uh, not uh, maybe ready uh, the physical development of these uh, children is as well uh, important because 
um, if we don't take care of uh, these children at an early stage, it affects their overall future developments. That is why we need them to understand uh, how we should invest in these children. You should also um, be able to see how do you balance um, the political dynamics um, of uh, an ECD center. That can be through community engagements as well as um, trying to provide um, leadership in terms of uh, how you go about uh, overcoming certain challenges um, as well as facilitating change. Now, you got your question paper. When you get your question paper, we always make sure that there are instructions. Please, dear students, try to follow these instructions to the pen, meaning the way they are. Number one, here we are saying questions should be answered on the question paper. Meaning, you do not need to have extra blank papers to write your answers. The question paper itself, spaces have been uh, created in the question paper itself where you are expected to write your answers. Unless otherwise your answers are not fitting, you can probably then ask to be provided with an extra sheet of paper. The marker location is a guideline for the time needed to answer each question. This is very critical because you will find some students spending even maybe 15 minutes on a question which has only two marks. So when you see this question the maximum I can score is two marks. Why should you spend more than 10 marks on that question? So try to weigh those uh, allocations of marks to the expected time that you can uh, spend on that uh, question. Write neatly and legibly. We know um, some handwritings are not uh, as clearly uh, as possible, but try to be neat just to give yourself an opportunity to at least be understood through writing. Observe the thinking level of the verb in each question. The thinking verb is where I will come at. These are words like um, compare, contrast, uh, examine. So at a later stage uh, or in the next slide I will come to that so that at least you understand critically what we are expecting. No unauthorized materials, notes or technical devices may be in your possession. Cheating in the examination will result in a failing grade. If you are caught cheating, unfortunately that will be the end of your module or examination in that particular time. So then it will result in a fail. Now, the verbs that I'm referring to are the ones that I'm going to explain next. Define. If your question says define, what is it that is expected from you, dear students? If we say define, you just need to give the precise, brief meaning of something. Precise, brief meaning of something. Often, referring to etymological roots of a concept. How did it come about? 
indicate what features are included and excluded. Compare. If a question says compare, what is it that you are expected to do? You need here to compare the similarities as well as the differences of a phenomena regarding particular criteria. Draw a conclusion emphasizing the similarities. Very often, a table is used to compare a phenomena. If you are comparing something, you are comparing A and B, and then you come up with a, what are the similarities and what are the differences. That is how you compare a certain aspect. Contrast. When you are contrasting, what is it that uh, is expected from you? Show how things are different or opposite regarding particular criteria. Look only for the differences. Not similarities, but differences. Look at it. If you are comparing, you are looking at the differences. Describe, to give a description of something. What is it that is expected from you? If a question says, describe what what? Then you just need to provide detailed features of an issue or stage of a process in a logical sequence using headings and proper sentences. Discuss. I think this is a basic to most of uh, you dear students because this is something that you do on a regular basis when you are with uh, your colleagues. When you are discussing, you are expected to give a clear description and then argue about features by pointing out positives and negative features arriving at a conclusion. When you are explaining, what is, it ex what is expected? You are expected to describe something and indicate the relationship between things, making, making it clear to the point. Analyze. If a question says, analyze, you are expected to examine information in detail to discover the main ideas or components or patterns or relationships. When you are analyzing, you are showing why they are important and how components are related and what theories they reflect. Determine. I think this one you need to look at the word that people use as most when you are saying that particular person is determined to do what. So in a question paper when we are saying determine what, we expect you to use the information given to work out the answer. Distinguish. Distinguish is the same as differentiate. When you are distinguishing, you are describing two phenomena, things or things according to relevant criteria. Point out clearly the differences between the two sets. This is the same as the contrast. Outline. When you are outlining something, you are giving an overview of and indicate the main features of something in a concise and systematic manner. Summarize. This one I think is easier to most of you because in many cases when you were at school, you were always hearing, no, the teachers were telling you to write a summary it's of a certain topic. So when you are summarizing, you are giving a brief account of the essence of a matter through the main ideas. No details or example, just focusing on the connection and meaning. Examine. When you are examining something, even when you go to the doctors, for example, the doctors say, okay, you are not feeling well, okay, let me uh, examine you to find out what is uh, the problem. So here, when you are examining, 
put this in mind. You are identifying detailed features of something or problems systematically and discuss them according to a given directive by drawing a conclusion. List or state present a list of names, facts, objects, etc. in a certain chronological order, how the things came by. Now, the question paper, you will find uh, some sections where you will be given certain concepts to define. So, when you are given these concepts to define, what should you do? You must give their definition. You must give a definition. You must discuss their characteristics and provide practical examples. For example, some words that you might uh, find in the question papers are like define early childhood education. So when we say define that one, then we expect you to give the definition of what early childhood is and then you discuss uh, the characteristics as well as providing practical examples. Affirmative teaching Define it. The same thing that we expect. Classroom management. When we are talking of classroom management, what exactly are we talking about? Inclusive education. Leadership. Adaptation. Culturally relevant materials. Moral standards. Management. Administration. Induction. Accountability. This are some of the concepts that you will be expected to define in the question paper or in the examination. In short, uh, dear students, let me take this opportunity to wish you the best in your studies. I hope and trust that you will achieve and attain the good marks so that you can be graduated at the end of uh, the semester. Thank you very much. Once again, my number, if you need uh, more assistance, you can call me between 1900 hours to 2000 hours on 0811 274139. Thank you very much.